let's dive right in. I'm going to start by grabbing the default cube, hitting X and deleting it. From there, I'll come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and I'm going to make sure I have Add Curve Extra Objects installed. Once that's done, exit out of this menu, Shift A, and look for Curve. Now, we could add any of these curves, and that would work for the approach we're going with, but today I want to use Noise 3D because it's going to generate a sort of freeform polymer chain right off the bat. I'm going to click this, open the submenu, and you can see there are all kinds of options for you to explore here. Different types, different lengths, resolutions, octaves, seeds, etc, etc. And just play with the options until you have something coiled or random-ish, depending on what you're looking for. And once you're happy with it, simply left-click anywhere on the screen, tab to go into object mode, and this will be our polymer chain. I'm going to rename that, and now we can get to work. To actually work with the polymer chain the way that we want, we're going to have to convert this from a curve to a mesh object, so simply hit F3, and what we're going to look for is convert to mesh. There's the option right there. Now this is an actual mesh object. If we tab into edit mode, you can see we have a number of vertices, and these verts are actually where we're going to place our monomer object. So in my case, I'm just going to use a simple sphere, but you could also use a cube or a Suzanne head or any object that you really wanted. It's going to be placed at these individual points. If you want, you can use my add-on quick particles, which will set up everything very quickly. I will show the longer approach after that, but if you have quick particles installed and it's free on GitHub, all you would do from here is simply hit F3, search for quick particles, and it would actually set everything up for you, including adding in the sphere. If you wanted to change out the sphere, you could simply add a new object, come to the particle settings for the polymer chain, and then change to use that object instead of this sphere. For our purposes, we're going to go and see the longer approach in case you do not have quick particles. So again, just delete this. We're going to come and remove that particle system, and we'll now do it from scratch. So grabbing our polymer chain, we would come to the particles properties tab, add in a new particle system, change it to hair, tab into edit mode, see that we have exactly 100 verts. So that's the number that we're going to use. For source, we will change from faces to verts, check modifier stack, uncheck random order, choose render as object, and then we can actually choose the object that we want. So in this case, I'm simply going to add in another sphere. We'll call this our monomer object. Control one to subdivide, shade smooth, and that will be it. So now we would simply choose this object and we can scale it down or use the scale settings in the particle system. So I'm just going to scale that down and you can see this is now the same thing that we achieved with quick particles, but those are all the behind the scenes steps. From here, we're actually gonna go ahead and add a little bit of thickness to our chain between the individual monomers. So I'm going to go ahead, come to the modifier properties for the particle chain, and then I'm going to add in a very simple skin modifier. Now, when I do this, it creates this huge distorted object, but we're gonna solve that in just a moment. We're going to bring the branch smoothing all the way up, enable smooth shading, and then we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier of at least two. From there, we're going to tab into edit mode, hit Z and drag to wireframe, then hit N to bring up the side panel, and you can see this option for mean, radius, X, and Y. I'm just going to bring these values down Control C to copy that and Control V to paste it. And now we actually have something that is a little bit more reasonable. So if we tab back into object mode and come to solid view and zoom in, you can see we now have this actual linker unit. And we can control that at any time by simply grabbing the chain, coming back and then adjusting it. And we can change both the Y or X if we want to. Now, this is where we're going to explore some of the animation for how we would make this sort of random by appearance. I'm going to hit G, Shift Z and just move our monomer object out of the way. We'll also add a material to it while we're at it so that we can have some nice colors to look at. I'm gonna go with a metallic green today. I'm thinking perhaps a dark green. So if we hit Z and come into material preview, you can now see we have our polymer chain with all of our monomers of a certain color. We can also add a material to this if we want this to have its own color. So now you can see our chain is black. We could also just use the same material and have uniformity throughout. But let's get to actually animating this. Now, the way that I like to do this with a sort of sense of randomness throughout the animation is to use some sort of driver on the rotation linked into another modifier. So I'm going to go ahead, come to the modifier properties. I'm going to change out all of these and I'm going to simply add in a simple deform modifier. I am going to keep it set to twist and for the object origin, I'm going to use an empty. But first, I need to make sure that this is above the particle system so that any time the simple deform moves the chain, the particles will move with it. So we just drag that to the top. And now you can see if I were to change this angle, that would work and it would all update. We'll come to solid view just so it's a little bit faster in the viewport. There we go. 
And now what we're going to do is simply hit Shift A. We'll add in a empty object. I'm going to use a sphere in this case. And now I'm going to come back, choose origin and use the empty. So now if I grab the empty, double tap R and rotate it around, you can see the chain will move with it. But I want this to be a little bit more interesting. So we'll start by bringing the angle back up to 45. And then I'm going to add drivers for the actual empty. Come down to the frame and right click, choose copy as new driver. Then with the empty selected, we're going to come up to the Z and we're going to choose paste driver. Now this number is going to get out of hand really fast because it's just going to go straight up to the maximum frame count. So instead what we're going to do is right click, edit the driver, then we'll change from type average value to scripted expression. And what I would like is for it to rotate 360, de rotate 360 degrees in a certain time. So I'm going to choose 360 times the sine of the current frame multiplied by a value just to make it a little bit slower. So 0 0.001 to start, and we'll see how that looks. Now, if we just simply hit play, you can see our empty is spinning and our polymer chain is updating with it. To make this a little bit more interesting, we're going to copy this driver and we'll paste it in both the X and Y rotation as well. And once that's done, we can simply rotate and you can see that everything is now moving around quite hectically. This is a little bit fast, so we're going to simply edit the driver and we'll throw another zero in here and now copy this again, pasting it between the other ones. And that should work. Still a bit quick. That's because it did not seem to want to paste. So let's try that again. We'll just change it in here this time. And now let's visualize it. So now we have this nice smoothly moving object. It's sort of moving along at a good rate. It's linked to the empty, it's random. So you can get that sort of sense of this is just a chain floating in space. Usually if I want, I'll add a little bit more interest to this by duplicating it, then rotating it around a bit. Because of the way that everything is set up with simple deform, it's actually going to change some of it for you. So it will sort of warp in an interesting way that adds the randomness. And if we go back, because everything is all set up, we can hit play and all of these chains are sort of going to move around in space. From here, you would very simply set up to render and you would have a finished product. You can see, of course, that this frame rate is about eight frames per second. So it would be about three times faster than this when you actually render it out. And if we come to material preview, you can see we have all of these different chains. They are all linked to the same monomer. So anytime I change the monomer, they will actually all update. And if I wanted to, I could also change the individual chains to have different monomers, different species, all kinds of stuff. So I could make one red, one blue, one with cubes instead of spheres, partial changes throughout. And that is roughly the idea behind how you can do all of these things and make these very simple polymer chains or beads on a string, as it were. Now, there are a few things that I'd like to note about this. This is sort of a precursor tutorial for some other interesting things we're going to be doing down the road. And I'm really excited about those. They are one of the major requests that I've had about how can you manipulate polymer chains for self-assembly, animation, and very importantly, the one that I'm going to be focusing on following up, protein animation. So that's something to look forward to in the future. But until then, thanks for coming out. Hopefully you found this useful or engaging. If you did, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues. And until next time, you have yourselves a great old day.